it's kind of cool because you can kind of almost take inspiration from anywhere and eventually it'll turn into its own thing. Oblivion Song. Yes. Um, so it's based in Philly. Yes. How is that going to play into the story you're telling with this? Well, I mean, it's uh, uh, not. <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna go. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, there's something about Philadelphia. You look at it, and you're like, oh, you know, there's something unique about that. So, I mean, honestly, I mean, mostly visual consideration got put into it. I was talking to a reporter earlier today that's actually from Philadelphia that uh, said he was reading the book, and the building that he works in was in the comic. Oh, nice. And he's like, that was really surreal. And so, like, what street did the thing stop at? And I was like, buddy, I got no idea. I have no. I'm sure Lorenzo has some kind of map put out, but uh, I don't know the specifics, so uh, I hate to reveal my weaknesses, but... Uh, but you just did. I did. All right, cool. I did. Tell us a bit about your lead, Nathan. Yeah, I mean, uh, Nathan Cole is somebody that, uh, after the transference, uh, was able to invent technology that would allow him to pop back and forth between dimensions, and so he kind of... Uh, formed a team that would go over there and uh, rescue people and it was a very big government funded operation he got a lot of military training to prepare him for this uh, and uh, you know it was a big deal for very many years and then as they started to rescue fewer and fewer people uh, the project didn't seem to justify its cost and so when we meet him in the story that project has been completely shut down but he's been continuing it for years after that point on his own with his own money and his own resources and so his equipment doesn't really work that well anymore and you know he finds himself getting stuck in oblivion every now and then and uh, uh, you know it's, it's, it's actually very dangerous for him but he's absolutely obsessed with making sure that no one is left behind. So Oblivion's song mm -hmm. Why song? Uh, it's really just in reference to um, the other dimension and uh, uh, of oblivion and how um, having different vegetation and having different uh, 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 animal life and insects and things like that would cause a different kind of white noise than we experience here. So we're constantly hearing wind and animals and traffic and things that just kind of recede into the background of our lives and to be transposed into another dimension and be completely uh, distant from that, but to be experiencing something new, I think would be very intoxicating for someone who has grown accustomed to it and, um, you know, is bouncing back and forth and, and, and experiencing it every day as a, as a new thing. Where and did so, you come up with inspiration for this story? Well, geez, uh, you know, uh, 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 it was a nugget a long time ago, like at least 10 years ago. Uh, I read an article about how uh, Jack Kirby had never done a long run on Batman. And Jack Kirby is, you know, founding father of the Marvel Universe, co-created almost every character there, uh, went on to create the new gods for DC Comics, uh, and really in the 60s and 70s did a lot of, like, really great poppy, zany stuff. And I uh, started thinking about, like, what kind of equipment he would have given Batman and what kind of stories he would have told. And I came up with, like, a cool superhero nugget that would have kind of been, like, a cool, like, what if Jack Kirby had done Batman story. Uh, and because that was 10 years ago, um, you know, over the course of 10 years, it's morphed into this, like, very dramatic, non-superhero story that really has no kind of bearing on where the idea started, which I think is, is kind of cool, because you can kind of almost take inspiration from anywhere, and eventually it'll turn into its own thing, uh, hopefully. Hopefully.